Even if you're not normal, the average is normal. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to talk about the central limit theorem and it's going to be clearly explained. Note, for this stat quest to make any sense at all, you should be familiar with the normal distribution. If not, check out the normal distribution, clearly explained. It would also be helpful if you were familiar with the concept of sampling from a statistical distribution. If not, check out sampling from a statistical distribution, clearly explained. The central limit theorem is the basis for a lot of statistics and the good news is that it's a pretty simple concept. In this stat quest, I'll explain what the central limit theorem is and why it's important. Like most things in statistics, I think the central limit theorem is easiest to understand if we look at some examples. So let's start with a uniform distribution. This one goes from zero to one. It's called the uniform distribution because there is an equal probability of selecting values between 0 and 1. The probabilities are all equal, and thus are uniform. We can collect 20 random samples from this uniform distribution, and then calculate the mean of the samples. And on the right, we can draw a histogram of the mean value. Since we only have one mean value, the histogram isn't very interesting. But after we collect 10 more samples and collect 10 more means, the histogram starts to look a little more interesting. Here's the histogram after collecting 20 samples and calculating 20 means. 30 means, 40 means, 50 means, 60 means, 70 means, 80 means, 90 means, and 100 means. After adding 100 means to the histogram, it's pretty easy to see that these means are normally distributed. However, to make it easy to see that the means are normally distributed, we can overlay a normal distribution. You might have noticed that in the last two slides, I put means are normally distributed in bold. I did this because this is what the central limit theorem is all about. Even though these means were calculated using data from a uniform distribution, the means themselves are not uniformly distributed. Instead, the means are normally distributed. BAM! Here's another example. This time, we'll start with an exponential distribution. Just like before, we can collect 20 random samples from this exponential distribution. And just like before, we can calculate the mean of the 20 samples. And lastly, we can draw a histogram of that mean over here on the right. After we collect 10 samples and calculate 10 means, the histogram starts to look a little more interesting. Here's the histogram after 20 means, 30 means, 40 means, 50 means, 60 means, 70 means, 80 means, 90 means, and 100 means. After adding 100 means to the histogram, we can see that they are normally distributed. Even though these means were calculated using data from an exponential distribution, the means themselves are not exponentially distributed. Instead, the means are normally distributed. BAM! So far, we have seen that the means calculated from samples taken from a uniform distribution are normally distributed. And means calculated from samples taken from an exponential distribution are also normally distributed. Well, it turns out that it doesn't matter what distribution you start with. If you collect samples from those distributions, the means will be normally distributed. Yes, 
there's a little asterisk here that means there's some fine print that will come later. For now, just know it's really fine print and not worth spending too much time worrying about. Double BAM! Cool, but what are the practical implications of knowing that the means are normally distributed? When we do an experiment, we don't always know what distribution our data comes from. To this, the central limit theorem says, who cares? The sample means will be normally distributed. Because we know that the sample means are normally distributed, we don't need to worry too much about the distribution that the samples came from. We can use the means normal distribution to make confidence intervals, do t-tests where we ask if there's a difference between the means from two samples, and ANOVA where we ask if there is a difference among the means from three or more samples, and pretty much any statistical test that uses the sample mean. Triple BAM! Note, out there in the wild, some folks say that in order for the central limit theorem to be true, the sample size must be at least 30. This is just a rule of thumb and generally considered safe. However, as you can see in the examples here where I use a sample size of 20, the rule was meant to be broken. Here's the fine print. In order for the central limit theorem to work at all, you have to be able to calculate a mean from your sample. Off the top of my head, I can think of only one distribution, the Cauchy distribution, that doesn't have a sample mean. And after doing biostatistics for 20 years, I've never come across it in practice. That said, if you know of distributions that don't have means, put them in the comments below and tell us what they're used for. I'm curious about how common this occurs. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more of them, please subscribe. And if you want to support stat quest, well, consider buying one or two of my original songs. All right, until next time, quest on!